the fun that I have each day that I share her devotionals and uh, come out here and sit down and relax for 10 minutes or so. Always gives me a chance to watch the plants grow and the seasons change. To watch how, just even in the sky, how the sun will move from the northernmost parts to the southernmost and how it traverses from the east to the west. You know, it's interesting is that scripture says that God's promises are like that, that as long as the sun rises and falls, as long as it goes from east to west, as long as we have sunshine and rain, so too is God's word to us, is that it will not fail, but that he has promised by something that we can see to fulfill that which we cannot see. And I like that, because that means that he knows that we need things to see sometimes and not just believe in without having any evidence thereof. And that gives great assurance. In devotional, with Speak to My Heart, O God, when you feel threatened, are you being threatened with loss? The loss of a loved one, the loss of position or reputation, the loss of a dream or ambition. If you remain steadfast in your pursuit of the Lord and His holiness, are you being challenged because of your commitment to our Lord? At a time like this, there is only one place to fix your eyes, and it's not on the lions that would devour you. I've been teaching the book of Daniel, and I cannot tell you what a blessing it has been to my life. It is such a powerful reminder of the incredible accuracy of the Word of God and how we need to be on the alert at all times, for surely the day of His coming is at hand. And boy, you could say that again. And if that's so, things are not going to get easier. And you could say that again and again. <laughs> more and more, we are going to experience the conflict of those final days when the battle lines are drawn and the love of men's hearts will grow cold, even as it has already. And evil will flourish, even as, be even as it has begun to. It will become increasingly brazen and vile. Things will become disgusting, and increasingly so. And there'd be many that would be hardened to accept it. However, as we look to the book of Daniel, we see the mighty and all-sufficient power of God displayed in the realm of mankind. We see God in his sovereignty override the plots of evil men and the natural appetites of hungry lions. I wish you'd stop and read Daniel 6 before you read any further, because I think it will help you better understand what I believe our Father would have me share with you. Jealous men sought Daniel's demise, but Daniel came out the victor. And in those men who had maliciously accused God's servant were themselves devoured by the lions they chose to devour Daniel with. Do victories like that just happen accidentally? No. Victories like this are one where Daniel was, on our knees, in our closets, alone with God, clinging to all that we know of our Lord. Convictions are born and holiness is perfected when we are shut up alone with God and not in the congregation of the mighty and his word in prayer. There in the quiet, in the stillness, alone and at one with God, set apart from the clamor of the world and its multitude of voices, we hear and we learn truth. We learn the facts of who and what we are. Faith is given birth in those moments of quiet reflection. We get a proper perspective of life, God's perspective. Then we need to face the lions. We come out prepared, knowing that we may be tossed into their den. It may not be a bed of roses, but also knowing that they won't devour us. Ultimately, victory will come to those who constantly serve Him, to those who won't lay aside their communion with God, but will constantly be in personal relationship with Him to those who don't take their eyes off God. 
What do we see in Daniel's life that we need to emulate, to become like-minded, to be like him? First of all, we see his commitment. They could find no ground of accusation or evidence of corruption, inasmuch as he was faithful and no negligence or corruption was to be found in him. Then those men said, We will not find any ground of accusation against this Daniel, unless we find it against him with regard to the law of his God. Daniel 6, 4 and 5. Oh, how I pray that the commitment of our lives will be as Daniel's, so that even our enemies would recognize its strength in our commitment to God and with God. Daniel also was a man of conviction and courage. That is evident from his response to the king's decree, which on penalty of death, facing a death penalty, forbade everyone from praying to any god or making any kind of a petition to anyone but King Darius. Daniel's heart was so set on obedience to God and so convinced of who he was and of the veracity of his word that he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God as he had been doing previously. Daniel 6.10 Daniel was also consistent. No starts and stops, no interruptions in his walk. Circumstances could not alter Daniel's relationship with God. And if the powers that be didn't like it, they would just have to feed him to the lions. Some things are worth dying for, if necessary. When the king went out to see if Daniel had survived the hungry lions, he called out, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? Daniel 6.20 Daniel was a man of commitment, conviction, courage, and consistency. His enemies knew it, the king knew it, his God knew it, and God dealt with Daniel's enemies. The lions that were supposed to devour him ate them instead. Then God through Daniel brought the king to deep conviction, such conviction that King Darius issued a new decree. I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom, men are to fear and tremble before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and enduring forever. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed, and his dominion will be forever. Daniel 6.26 So when your faith is challenged, when you feel threatened, remember that by faith, Daniel shut the mouths of lions, and you can too. Not by declaring it, but by praying it. By being alone with God, not in front of the people. By seeking God and walking with him and doing as he tells you to do. Your God is a lion tamer. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. I like the fact that Daniel had a personal relationship with the Lord that wasn't one of simply religious ideas or idealism, because I'm an idealist. I can come up with lots of thoughts and ideas to stand up for and to make a cause for but I choose not to because the reality is is that when God who is living and alive and intervening in our behalf says that he can move the hearts of men why would I want to change someone's mind when I can change their heart so when you think you have to have an outward action to manifest something that God is doing to a person inwardly you're fighting the wrong battle the reality is, is you need to get with God to work on the inside of a man as opposed to the outside that you see. Because man looks on the outward things, but God looks on the heart. What Daniel could not see and what you cannot and I cannot is that he's using all of it to accomplish his purpose and not our own. If we commit our ways unto him and trust him to lead us, then we participate in his purposes and we accomplish his will so that we can say it wasn't my will that was done but his